Oh, okay. Uh, all right. Okay. Let's, let's, let's start. All right. It's my pleasure to introduce Alexander Lichak from Karlsruhe Institute of Technology, who will give a, a mini course of consisting of three lectures on Alexander from uh, uh, geometry cut case spaces. And so, so this is um, this is in preparation for, for the for the workshop on geometry of spaces with upper and lower curvature bounds, which will take place next week. I hope everybody attending is aware of that. Uh, so thank you very much, Alexander, for agreeing to do this. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much for the introduction and for yeah the opportunity to give this uh, series of. Uh, lectures. So I'm sorry I could not. Uh, yeah, it's so very unfortunate I could not come to Toronto and to do this in presence. So I, yeah, I do what I can. So I also apologize uh, to the experts. So there will be nothing new in these lectures. So uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> so let us start. So um, no. So let's start. Ah, okay. So yeah, we start with the plan. So the plan is very simple. So the first two lectures will be about very general definition, basic properties, characterizations, and a few basic tools used in the theory of spaces with uh, curvature bounded above. And uh, the last talk will be about space about spaces with upper curvature bounded extendable geodesics. So Vitaly has asked me to talk about this. Um, so the whole lecture series is a kind of advertisement for uh, two books by Alexander, by Stefan Alexander, Vitaly Kapovic and Anton Petronian on Alexander geometry, in particular on Calzero spaces, the second book, and uh, two papers by myself and uh, Koichi Nagano. Ah, so I should also say that uh, I uh, don't see many of you now. So if you have questions, questions are very welcome. You should uh, better interrupt me. Yeah, somehow. So otherwise, uh, or yeah, yeah, so Vitaly is monitoring the chat. So I, 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 I will, or he will interrupt me, but you can also do it on your own. So let us proceed according to the plan. So the very short history of the subject. So I think Anton, who is giving the larger and the second part of uh, this lectures on Alexander geometry, he will uh, one of his lecture will be about history of Alexander geometry. So I just um, call a few names. So there was a kind of prehistory. So before Alexander, before. The definition we will work with um, was given. So it started with Gauss, in my opinion. So who yeah, so who studied surfaces and who recognized so that curvature has a lot to do with angles on the surfaces. Those angles of triangles, then Riemann, Gata, and Tadama, they 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 have proved what one can uh, what one can call in the terminology I will introduce kind of globalization theorem in Riemannian geometry and non-positive curvature. And then there, there were other um, other developments in metric geometry, generalizing non-positively curved manifolds, so in particular, so Boosman and White should be called here. So then uh, the foundations of the Theory were laid by Alexandrov, uh, uh, so after shortly after Second World War, and then so the so-called Russian school, uh, Reshetnyak, and many uh, many students of Alexandrov, so Nikolai Belistovsky, so they have, um, yeah, so they have uh, laid the the basics of the theory, uh, but. Uh, um, it, yeah, it was not, uh, yeah, there were not many people working on this theory and it was kind of used for, yeah, it was a theory for, for its own sake. So it has not been used very much outside. And then, so the modern period started with, uh, with Kromov, so who popularized the subject and showed, uh, yeah, lots of directions uh, where, this theory could go. So, and then there are so many names after him so that I have not listed them. 
So on the theory of non-positive coverage, upper coverage bounds, so it has a very broad range of applications. So to name a few, so these algebraic groups, Lie groups, so this, these applications, they were already known to Platon. And then geometric group theory, so they are, so it's they have a very flourishing part of, yeah. Of algebra and geometry, uh, and there non-positive Likov spaces play a very important role. But also, so in in PDEs, in in topology, and in other subjects. So even in applications, non-positive curvature plays some some role. But I will not. Uh, so uh, yeah, I will not talk about applications. So actually, uh, so originally four talks were planned, but uh, then due to holidays or to some other talks, so the fourth was was canceled. So, so it would be about applications, but now it's not here. Okay. So let us start with uh, real mathematics. So uh, we start with Euclidean geometry. Uh, it's a so-called Alexander's lemma, which is at the very basic uh, of uh, at the basement of all of theory of non-positive curvature. So it, it's a rather elementary statement in Euclidean geometry. So uh, we have a Euclidean quadrangle, which is concave at the point P. So I will draw it now. So it looks like, you know, so. I hope you can see it. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. So if you don't see the quadrangle, then. Okay. So I think yeah, it's easy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, that's the quadrangle concave at the point P. And now we draw a triangle with the same side length as that one. It's also in the Euclidean plane. So what you should think of, you just, uh, so that this first picture is movable and you take the point P and move, and you move it uh, so, downwards until um, yeah, the connection between X and P and P and Z becomes straight. So, and now the Alexandrov's lemma can be formulated. So the easiest statement is that the distance, so F here, distance between Y and P and Y prime and P prime and on the right hand side, statement, it's larger and on the left hand side is shorter. So it's kind of obvious if you, if you, yeah, if you think about it, but if, yeah, but uh, yeah, so the correct proof, so it really needs some lines. Now there is a strengthening of this statement and that's the following part. So we have a canonical map from, uh, the uh, de degenerate quadrangle on the right to the general rectangle quadrangle on the left. So, and here by quadrangle, I just mean the boundary. Yeah. So we have the map which sends x x bar to x, y bar to y, and so on, and the connections, the segments to the segments. And the statement is that this. Um, that this uh, that this map is one Lipschitz. So if we take two points on the side, so I, here, I, I write that two um, so so maybe that's not so good. Here, there, there, here, and there. So then the distance on the right is not less than the distance on the left. That's again not so obvious. Uh, but this and even the stronger statement, which I will state now, they are, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so the, the strongest version of Alexander's lemma is the following statement that you can 
that you can uh, enlarge this uh, map, so which sends x bar to x, y bar to y, z bar to z, p bar to, to p, uh, to uh, one Lipschitz map from the Jordan domain of the quadrangle on the right. Uh, so I will, I'm sorry, I can do the quadrangle oh, on the left. So, it's not so straight now, but now I, I have called this Q bar, and here it's Q, and I have this map, and this map is one dipshit, so it does not increase distances. So the first statement is the special case of the second, the third special, uh, the second special case of the third. So is, um, yeah, other questions so far? Is i hat, can you take i hat to be an extension of i? Does it coincide yes, with I on the yes, boundary? Yes, 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 it has to be. It has to be an extension. So just because uh, the distance between X and Y, uh, it equals the distance between X bar and Y bar. So this part of the boundary has to go isometrically. So the boundary has to go the same way, yes. So I bar, it, it extends I, exactly. Mm -hmm. yes. Further questions? Okay, then uh, some comments. So on the last slide, so there, there are three statements. So the first one was that the distance between Y and P is not larger than between Y bar and P bar. Then the second one was that on the whole boundary, the distances are Sh uh, shorter are not larger and and the third one that you can extend it to the interior so it's obvious that three implies two implies one in fact uh, the other implications so also uh, uh, the fact that from that proving so this uh, more mm, yeah, stronger statement so that you can extend it to one Lipschitz map from the whole Jordan domain. Uh, it follows from uh, the so-called Kirch-Brown's theorem. Um, again, the Euclidean version of it, we will, we will uh, see another version of it later. So, and it tells you the following, so that uh, whenever you have uh, any subset of the Euclidean space, you have a one Lipschitz map from this subset again to the Euclidean space, then this map extends to a one Lipschitz map of the whole Euclidean space. So, and to get an implication one to three, we just consider the map from the three points for the four points, X bar, Y bar, Z bar, P bar to X, Y, Z, P. The statement one, in just a statement that this is a one Lipschitz map, and then the only one Lipschitz extension must do what we need. So in this sense, uh, so if you try to prove uh, three directly, it's a little bit delicate. But so if you believe in Kish Brown's theorem, then this is a way around. Okay. Um, is it um, other questions to this to this slide? So until now, it is just Euclidean geometry. So not. There are no. Uh, sorry, did you say what A is? A is any subset. So for any subset of Rn and any one Lipschitz map, you can extend it to the whole Rn. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay. Uh, so here we apply it to the four point space consisting of X bar, Y bar, Z bar, and P bar. Okay. So now we come to to uh, yeah to cut to definition of spaces with curvature bounded above. So again, I apologize. Probably most in the room know what uh, 
I'm talking about, but nevertheless, I, yeah. No, I, I give the definition. So uh, we start with a complete geodesic metric space. So the so completeness is definitely known, and geodesic means that you can connect every pair of points by, uh, by a segment isometric to an interval. So and the segment is called the geodesic by a curve isometric. To an so a triangle in a metric space uh, are three geodesics, so which I denote by x, y is a geodesic between x and y, y, z is a geodesic between y and z, and z, x. So this is not, uh, this may be confusing, so the geodesic might not be unique, but uh, yeah, we just, um, so uh, a, a triangle is a choice of three geodesics between three points. And then uh, for any triangle, we have a comparison triangle uh, in the surface of constant curvature couple. So I make, oh, I'm sorry, I make here drawing. So here is, this is X, Y, Z, here. So, and if you have never, Thing. So then always think that kappa is equal to zero and then M like and the M2 kappa is R2. Otherwise, so for other kappa, it's the surface of constant curvature. Kappa and for positive kappa, you need a little bit of care because then large triangles are not defined. So we have, so for any triangle, we have a comparison triangle. This is a triangle with the same side length. And this is uniquely determined up to up to an isometry of the of, of M2. So and uh, we say that so and we have a canonical map here, so there, and this is called yeah, we call it I delta. Yeah, so it sends the yeah, the segment between X bar and Y bar to this geodesic to the chosen geodesic between x and y and so and now we call this triangle on the left we call it k kappa called kappa thin if this triangle is one Lipschitz so meaning again so that if we take any pair of points on the left on the right and they take the corresponding pair of points on the left then here we have a distance that is on the right, so in the plane, in this, uh, the distance is not shorter than in our triangle. And we say that our space, now this is the main object about which the lectures go, say that the complete geodesic space is cut kappa. Mm. Curve, so it has curvature globally bounded above by kappa. If, uh, yeah, if all triangles are kappa thin. So if for any triple of geodesics, so in going um, yeah, in this way, so from X to Y, from Y to Z, from Z to X, so cyclically, uh, the corresponding triangle is kappa thin. Are there questions? Hmm? Okay. So oh, can I ask a question? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. If uh, if the condition is satisfied for all three points and the shortest dead geodesics, is it satisfied? Uh sorry. Ah, yeah, that's a very uh, good question. So for me, geodesics are always minimizing. So here, it's not geodesics in the sense of Riemannian geometry where. Uh, you say that the geodesic is a locally distance minimizing map. So here the geodesics are always minimizing. Okay, so if it's satisfied for one. But no, there are yeah. two so that's another very good question. So it's not true that if you have for any triple of points, you have uh, three geodesics connecting them so that the triangle is thin, then your space does not need to be cut kappa. 
does not need to be card kappa. So that need to be card zero if you compare it with a Euclidean plane. That's a not uh, that's a non-obvious uh, statement. So a counter example, if you would try to do it by hand, yeah, it would take a while. But uh, so if you know what the Urison space is, then it's easier to see that it is a count example. If you don't know what it is, it's yeah, yeah, you yeah, it will be fun. It will be fun to learn what it is. So, uh, was it the question? Yeah, does it answer the question? Hi. Uh... I, okay, yes, that, that question has been answered. I have another one. Um, yeah, typically, um, really concerning the basic definition. So typically, I see the, the definition of cut, uh, cut K space, uh, where one of these two points that you pick on the triangle coincides with the vertex. Like, so or something like ah. the median <laughs> is short. So I wonder whether it's equivalent or it is, uh, you yes. know. Uh, yes, it's equivalent. I think I will... Uh, I will also say that, uh, yeah, mm, I hope, yeah, yeah, I think, I, yeah, <laughs> so maybe I will forget to, to say it later, so I say it now, yet, so, so that's true, so you don't need to, uh, so it's equivalent to saying that all triangles are thin in the sense I have stated, or to say that for any triangle, just the distance between a vertex and the midpoint of the opposite side is... Thank you. Thank you. Not a larger than Thanks. in the triangle, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, other questions, comments? No. So, uh, very basic examples and very basic comments. So, we will see much more examples later today. So, uh, the, the most basic examples so are the three spaces of constant curvature, of constant of curvature minus one, of curvature one, of curvature zero. So the hyperbolic space, it cut minus one and cut zero, but sorry, yes, cut minus one, cut zero, and cut one. So the Euclidean space is cut zero, so it has curvature of zero. It is also cut one, but not cut minus one. And finally, the sphere is cut one and not cut zero and not cut minus one. So in general, cut kappa, so the condition of being cut kappa becomes stronger and stronger if kappa becomes smaller and smaller. So it says curvature is not larger than kappa globally. So if you just believe this formulation, then, then it becomes clear. So, and this is, yeah, this is not very, yeah. So this is, uh, this is very easy to see. And this is in coincidence with the picture you usually draw, if you draw a, uh, a, a spherical triangle, so it looks like this. So this is an S N, and the hyperbolic triangle looks like this. So an H N. This is much thinner. So the Euclidean, the uh, hyperbolic triangle is thinner than the Euclidean triangle, and this, and this is thinner than the spherical triangle. So then another uh, basic observation is that uh, just because if you uh, rescale this, the surface of constant curvature kappa, you become the surface of constant curvature uh, mm, one over lambda square times kappa. So also that if you take a space, uh, then it is cut kappa, if not only if there is scale space, if you Take the same set and all distances you just rescale by the factor lambda is a cut one over lambda square times kappa space. So, and by this rescaling, uh, it's clear that only three values of kappa meta, namely kappa plus minus one and kappa equal to zero. So, the final comment is the following so that most of the theory does not depend on kappa. However, there is one very important exception. So, and this, and due to this exception, so uh, uh, most of people who are doing um, cut spaces, they work on cut zero spaces on non-positive curvature. And this important exception is the is the fact that there is a globalization theorem. We are going to talk tomorrow about uh, and there is a version of it for positive kappa but it's not very powerful so unlike the lower curvature bounds as you will learn 
uh, by Anton. Uh, so there, the globalization theorem um, yeah, holds equally well for all kappa. So in upper curvature bounds, there's a very large distinction between positive kappa and kappa zero or on zero. So and and due to this fact, so the cut one spaces they play only uh, they often play uh, just an auxiliary role. So if one wants to understand something about cut zero, so then one is sometimes forced to to use cut one spaces. Okay. So uh, basic properties. So we stick to the case kappa equal to zero. So other cases are very similar, just so the conditions become slightly more complicated. And one very important uh, distinction is that for kappa equal to one, all um, so any conclusion you draw is only about distances which are at most uh, pi, yeah, which are at most pi. So for distance larger than pi, you have no condition. Okay. So the very basic statement about cut zero is that the geodesics are unique and that they depend continuously on the end point. So they are unique in the sense that they are uniquely defined by the end points. Uh, and this is very easy to see. So if we add two points, and if they are connected by two geodesics, we just take the following configuration. So we take the midpoint Z of one geodesic and the midpoint P of the other. And so we assume that, um, yeah, that they really look like this, so that P and Z do not coincide. So otherwise, we continue this process and we find such a picture. So, and uh, here we have, a direct contradiction because if we take the comparison triangle, then the comparison triangle is degenerate. So here z bar is equal to p bar. And so the distance on the left must be not larger, so it must be zero. So the say so essentially very similar argument proves that uh, geodesics depend continuously on the endpoints. Uh, so if you take two points, x and x1, which are close by, and y and y1, which are close, then the statement is that the whole, that the geodesic between x and y and x1 and y1 are uh, close. And uh, this we do in two steps. So we, we first consider the triangle x, y, x, y1, and we see that the geodesic x, y1 is very close to the geodesic x, y, just because it is the case in the comparison triangle, where one side is has a definite length and the other side is rather small. And then they compare this middle geodesic with the geodesic on the right and see that they are also close. And uh, so this implies also that the whole space is contractible. And also, so, okay, we will also see in a second, also balls in the space are contractible. So this is also, so this, this, this is a very strong topological restriction on the space. So, and this is really, this happens only in the case of non-positive curvature, in the case of curvature one, there of upper curvature one. So for cut one spaces, there are essentially no global restriction on the topology. So you can, um, you know, I will mention it also later, but I can also say it now. So due to the result of Bristovsky and Gromov, any simplicial complex carries a metric, so carries a cut one metric. So globally, uh, the cut one property does not have any topological implications. Are there questions? Okay. 
Sorry, um, I'm yeah. just trying to uh, sort this out. Um, so, for example, if I look at the flat torus, um, it's cat mm -hmm. zero, I suppose. No, 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 no. So the circle is not cat zero. So uh, that's, yeah. Uh, so this is, yeah, this is a little bit, so this is confusing. So this is a, this, so these are lectures about upper curvature bound. So we, we are now talking about upper curvature bound zero, but so it's about global curvature bound zero. So uh, we are, so the, here, uh, yeah, uh, we will, so I will uh, yeah, state this theorem of Qatar other mind a few seconds. So uh, in, in this language, it will say that uh, Riemannian manifold is cut zero if and only if it has non-positive curvature and is simply connected. So uh, the, uh, the torus and even so the circle, the circle is not cut zero just because, oh yeah, just because geodesics are not unique. So if you take a point and it's antipod, then they are connected by two geodesics. So in a circle and also on the torus. So the circle and the torus, they are non-positive, they are locally non-positively curved. So the small small triangles there are, um, are thin, but large triangles are thick. So for instance, uh, so maybe for such a degenerate case, it's maybe it's maybe less obvious, but if you take so it's maybe more visible, it's better visible for, for this triangle, if you take here X, Y, and Z. So then the triangle uh, looks like a spherical triangle. So it's very thick. Does it answer the question? Thank you. So this is the first basic property. Uh, uh, the uh, second kind of basic properties, uh, it concerns angles. So which were also at the very origin of Alexander's theory of uh, non-positive curvature. So in order to, to say what, uh, sorry, uh, what the angle is. So we take three points in our space, X, Y, Z, and if we are assume they are connected by geodesics, and uh, so we take the comparison triangle, so three points in the space of constant curvature, so say zero, and there we take this angle and they call it the the kappa comparison angle between the points x, y, and z. And now we define what the real angle is between the geodesics x, y, and y, z. Namely, uh, so yeah, we run on the geodesics x, y towards y, on the geodesic z, y towards y as well. So we take here point, say, x, t, here point. Z S, and we consider the comparison triangle of this smaller triangle Z S. And uh, here again we have an angle. So we can we can in fact write this this comparison angle. So this is this angle. So we can write this angle just by the but by the cosine formula. Yeah, so if we do it in in the plane and yeah, for other kappas, then they use the you know, the trigonometric formulas in the sphere or in the hyperbolic plane. And now we let uh, the distances t and s go to zero. So we take small and small triangle and look uh, what the angle converged to. If it converged to something, then we call it the angle between these two geodesics, yx and yz. And now, so the observation uh, is that uh, in a cut kappa space, uh, first of all, the kappa comparison angles, they are monotone. So if we 
consider these comparison angles, and if we go towards y, then the angles become smaller and smaller. So, so sorry, I'm confused about the notation. So you have a kappa superscript on one of the angles and not the other one. Is that? Uh... Yeah, 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 yeah. This is a very good question. So, uh, yeah, on the other side, it is independent of kappa. On the left hand side, so this angle, if it's defined for one kappa, it's it's independent. Yeah, then it's defined for other kappas, and it's independent of the kappa. And the point is that uh, if you take small triangles in the surface of constant curvature, then for uh, if they, now yeah, if you take a very small triangle on the plane and the triangle with the same side lengths on the sphere, then they have almost the same angles. So the defect of the triangle, it is measured by the by the area of, of yes. by the gauss bonnet yes. formula, by the area of this triangle, so it, so it becomes smaller and smaller. Mm -hmm. uh, so here we just, so uh, yeah, at the end, so we know that the angle is defined for all kappa, but uh, so, so using the kappa, from the curvature bound, it is more natural. Yeah. So now the kappa comparison angles, they are monotone. This is rather clear because uh, just by very definition of, of, of cut kappa, say the distance between x, uh, x, t, Hat and oh sorry, this is Z and Z and Z as hat. This is larger than that, and uh, here this is equal to that. And so, or uh, uh, the both triangles on the right, they are triangles in the constant curvature. So. Uh, here we have uh, two small triangles with two equal sides, and the third side is larger, so the angle is large. So if we go, as we see it on the picture, so if we go from x to y and from z to y on this geodesic, so then statement that this triangle is thin tells you that the comparison angles become smaller and smaller. So this uh, this is monotone, and uh, the angle in particular, so the angle exists and is always not larger than the comparison angle. It's a very basic observation. Um, questions? About angles, comparison angles, and... No, no questions? Okay. Then the third, ah, so ah, okay. So I should say, so the angles they are uh, they uh, they exist, and we have the first variation formula. So the first variation formula tells us how. So if we take one point x, another point y, and we start on the point y, running on a geodesic towards the point z, and now we want to understand. What is the distance between x and a point which is close to y and which goes on this geodesic? Then uh, we have the same formula as in the Euclidean space. So the distance between x and y s is equal to the distance between x and y plus here the angle is alpha. So it's given by the angle. So it also uh, here is minus. Plus, so minus cosinus alpha times s plus small s. So we have uh, the first formula of variation um, uh, due to, uh, so, so this makes the angles yeah, important. So in particular, so it, it tells you that if the angle, so if you have a right angle, or if the angle is at least pi over two, then going uh, in such a direction, you increase the distance.
This is related to the third, what they have called basic property, and which is probably which I maybe should have called first. So this is the most important property of cut zero spaces. This is convexity. So and the you know, the very so the meta statement is that so in any sense the cut zero spaces are as convex. So their distance. So whenever you have something which you can express in terms of convexity of the distance in the Euclidean space, you can you have the same expression in any cut zero space. So for instance, closed balls are convex. Why this? So this just tells you if you have a point, if you have two other points, and if this is if this distance is smaller than r, this distance is smaller than r, then on any point or on the geodesic, the distance is also not larger than r. Yeah, this is because just you take the same comparison picture and you know that the distance from yeah, I should call I should have called this not i, but y. So from any point on the geodesics x z is not la larger than the corresponding distance in the comparison triangle. So uh, slightly, so uh, slightly more advanced statement is that the whole distance function is convex. So this you can uh, restate in a more down to earth term just by saying if you have. Uh, two geodesics x y and x or x one y one x two y two. You have you take the midpoints. Then the distance between the midpoints is at most one half of the distances between the boundaries. And this is also very easy to prove. So we just connect x, y, and y to. Sorry, again, just yeah. a notational comment. So you're using absolute value as the distance function in an arbitrary space. Yes, yes, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I should have, I should have, right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, yeah, so um, we take the midpoint. No, yeah, this is not really the midpoint. So try it. So here the midpoint. We take the midpoint bit of the geodesic, and then we con consider this one, m y m one m and m m two, and we consider the triangle x1, y2, x2. And in this triangle, we see that the connection between the midpoints is not larger than the connection between the, the, the midpoints in the comparison triangle. And in the comparison Euclidean triangle, um, the connection between the two midpoints have exact, has exactly length one half of uh, the third side. So it tells you that m, m by two, the distance from m to m two is at most one half of the distance between x1 and x2, and similarly from m and m1. And then we use tri triangle, just the triangle inequality to estimate m1, distance from m1 to m2 by the sum of the m1 to m and m2, m2, m2. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay. Then another version of convexity, and this is really this is an equivalent statement to being cut zero, is that the distance function is what is called too convex. So and here the meaning is if you restrict the, the, the square distance function to any point, you restrict it to any geodesic then its second derivative in the weak sense is uh, at least two. Okay, but, but, but if you have never seen so what, uh, what lambda convexity is just, uh, yeah, just say so the, the distance function is as convex is an R2, and this is by the very definition of, uh, of, a, yeah, of what uh, thin triangles are. Yes. 
Another uh, very important convexity property, which is uh, very widely used in uh, cut zero geometry, is that, uh, first of all, so the distance function to a convex subset is itself a convex function. And whenever we have a convex subset, then the foot point projection, so for any point, there is a unique point on this convex subset, which is uh, the closest point to the point X. And, and the distance between X and Y is not less than the distance between X, Y, X1 and Y1. And this is, uh, this is very easy to see also by the, by the, uh, using the first variation formula and the convexity statement I just have said. So you consider this connection. Then uh, uh, this connection line segment is in the convex set by the definition of convexity. So uh, since Y1 is the closest point, going on this geodesic, we cannot come closer. So it tells you that this angle alpha 1 your beta one, so it also alpha one and beta one are at least pi over two. Otherwise, the first variation formula would give us a contradiction. So, and now uh, we use another version of the first variation formula and we consider the, the distance function between the geodesics x1 and x and y1 and y, where they parameterize them with constant velocity on on the interval from zero to one. Now the convexity tells us that this distance function is convex and the assumption on the angles tells us that the derivative at the origin is non-negative. This is the first variation formula again. And then the convex function which starts with positive derivative and grows. So it tells us that the distance between x and y is at least as large as the distance between x, y, x1, and y1. So uh, yeah, I should say, so I, I hope it's not too confusing. So I, uh, so I prove, yeah, yeah, I, I'm trying to prove some things which can be proved yeah, in a very short time and I just skip others. So yeah, I, I, I hope it's not confusing that I, yeah, that I am just, yeah, prove what, yeah, just something more or less um, artificially chosen. Okay, are there questions so far? So this convexity, the convexity of cut zero, so this is the most the most important property of, of cut spaces. So, uh, and, and this convexity, so it has a, yeah, so there's a form of it in cut minus one and in cut one spaces, but they are more complicated in cut one spaces, they, yeah, they're really much less useful. Okay, so uh, I would like to end today's uh, lecture with uh, an important theory, the shaping of the theory, and then discussing uh, a couple of examples. So the gluing theorem of Reshetnyak. So it starts, so before I'm saying what the theorem is, I start with the lemma. Ah, so yeah, it all appears on the same slide. Um, okay, so uh, first, uh, disregard the theory. <laughs> so uh, the statement is, uh, the statement of the lemma is very simple. So we take a triangle in the metric space. So here, uh, the only, um, yeah. so mostly our spaces, so all X which appear will be cut zero, unless I say explicitly that it is not the case. So here it's in general space. So we don't know at this moment that it is zero. So it's a statement about arbitrary triangles. So and here's the statement. So if we assume we have a triangle and a point on the side, and we assume we have a connection between Y and 
this point of the opposite side. The assumption is that the small triangles, that these two small triangles are kappa thin, then the statement is that the whole triangle is kappa thin as well. So the connection of the triangles, if the connection, so if it if the connection happens like this, so that the uh, so that the point uh, may become mm, is on the geodesic. Uh, so and the proof is uh, uh, very uh, very easy. Uh, so here it is. So we take. So here we see Alexandrov's um, for the first time. Maybe yeah, it's a, it's the most important time of the years. So we consider the comparison triangle of the of this. I, am, I have drawn it too large. Of the small triangle. And we take another comparison triangle and put them, yeah, and uh, put them. Um, together along the common side. Um, now we make the following observation. So that uh, the triangle on the right, that it must be concave at the point P bar. So otherwise, uh, uh, we would find a point on the side uh, on the geodesic y bar, p bars on the Euclidean plane, such that the connection between x, so such that the so, so otherwise, the segment between x bar and z bar would intersect the other diagonal, and then using the assumption that the small triangles are thin we would find a point on yp such that the distance from x to this point plus the distance of z to this point is shorter than the distance from x to p plus z to p. And this would contradict the fact that this is a geodesic. So the picture is really like this. The, the, the comparison, so if we put the two comparison triangles together, then they see a compare, then they see a quadrangle which is concave at p bar. And now we use Alexandrov's lemma. So the two pictures on the right, so they are in the Euclidean plane. So we have a uh, one Lipschitz map here. Here's a one Lipschitz map. And the fact that they have here on Lipschitz map from the whole, so from the whole Jordan domain. So it implies that the, uh, then we combine this map with the two maps. So with the map, so with the one Lipschitz map uh, from the, so from the small triangle in the middle to the small triangle on the left and from the other one. And this gives us the one Lipschitz map from the right to the left and improves that the large triangle is one uh, is is thin. So maybe it was too fast. I hope, um, yeah, it was at least a bit understandable. So where the Alexander's lemma appears here. Uh, sorry, I have a question. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there a couple here is Positive or uh, is there any? No. Uh, so uh, it, uh, there's no difference. So there's no difference. So it, it works equally for all couples. The only difference is that for uh, for so for kappa positive. So for okay. So there are three couples. So one, zero, one, minus one. From zero and minus one, it works completely the same. From kappa equal to one, uh, the same works unless your triangles are not too large. Once they become large. So, yeah. Uh, so in the sphere, triangles of perimeter larger than two pi do not exist, and this is a technical problem. So you should take care. Uh, but otherwise, it works equally for all couples. So I'm a bit confused. Uh, if the picture on the left is, say, also on the Euclidean plane, then the no, triangles no, no, zero. Okay. Thin. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, sorry. So, yeah, the picture on the left is in the metric space. So this one is in a metric space. So this is a triangle in a metric space, 
and we want to say if it's thin or not. So stainless, we want to understand. So we want to, how do we, yeah. So we want to, <laughs> so we want to, uh, we have a triangle X, Y, Z in the metric space. And it consists of two triangles. So it's subdivided by, uh, by a chord in two triangles. So what I'm saying and, is, uh, suppose it is, uh, suppose the metric space is uh, uh, the flat uh, R2. So yeah. uh, those triangles would be uh, zero thin. Yeah. Uh, how can we conclude that it's a convex concave point P? Okay. Ah, so yeah, this would be, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I always, so I, I, I very often say, uh, something is shorter, something is concave, something is larger than pi over two. So it's always uh, non-sharp. So here by concave, I mean concave or straight. So if it's in the Euclidean plane, then this uh, middle triangle would just be the same picture and also the third one. So, and the whole map would be the identity and it would be one Lipschitz. And nothing goes wrong if it's, uh, if it's on say the sphere. No, so on the sphere, so the following goes wrong. So on the sphere, no triangle is kappa thin. Uh, uh, okay. Oh, no. Uh, so, or, or, or you mean for kappa equal to one? Yes. So if we do for kappa equal to one, ah, sorry. Okay, so for kappa equal to one, the picture, the two pictures on the right, they are in the constant in the surface of constant curvature. So they are in the sphere. So for kappa equal to zero, we compare with the Euclidean plane. For kappa equal to minus one, we compare with the hyperbolic plane. So all the comparison triangles, we draw them in the hyperbolic plane. For the so there is a Alex one. Alexandrov's theorem for a sphere. Yes, yes. Yes, so there is exactly the same Alexander, so exactly the same statement holds true for all couples, for all couples. So Alexander of Slema in the three, in the three versions I have stated holds true for all couples. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, and now we use this Lemma to prove the following theorem, so that if uh, the following gluing theorem of Eschetnack, it tells us the following. So if we take two cut zero spaces or cut kappa spaces, and assume that uh, they share, so that uh, they have, sorry, yeah, I have drawn it, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, so that they have, uh, that each of them has a subset which is convex. So here's I1, here's A2, and they are isometric each other. And then assume we, we have chosen an isometry, then we can, if we glue two spaces along this isometry, then we obtain oops, something like this. And uh, the statement is that this space is that this space is uh, is itself cut kappa, and the proof the proof is very is rather easy. Namely, how do triangles look in this glued space? Now, yeah, they look like this. So they. Uh, so either the, uh, the three points sit on one side and then the corresponding triangle is thin anyway, or two points are on one side and one point is on the other side. Here's X, here's Y, here's Z. And then we can subdivide this triangle in three triangles. So P1, P2. And then first we see the triangle P1, P2, Z is thin because it sits in the cut kappa space X2. The triangle P1, X, P2 is thin because it sits in the, in the other uh, half. So the whole triangle by, the, by this lemma 
sits in the in the now yeah. so the whole triangle x p one z is thin and then uh, we apply this gluing lemma again and see that the triangle x y z that the whole triangle is thin and so from the thinness of the triangle on each side of the picture we conclude that all triangles in the whole space are thin. So yeah, I'm very sorry, but uh, so my time uh, is over, and I postpone the picture, uh, the the examples to the next time. There is a question here. Somebody asking if AIs are closed. Ah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So the subsets should be closed. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, yeah, um, sorry, so the examples, yeah, okay, yeah, uh, <laughs> next time. Yeah, are there questions? Uh, more questions, please. So in the proof of the lemma, you said that the T bar, the comparison point T bar will be convex. Uh, why do you say that? Can you just explain the uh, Sorry, it's, it's difficult. Uh, could you please repeat it? Uh, it's about the lemma or it's about the theorem? It's about the lemma. It's about the, the lemma. lemma. You said okay. that the P, the comparison point P bar will be convex, right? In the yeah. comparison triangle. So why is yeah. that? You just repeat oh. that. Right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's uh, so here is x, y, z. Here is p. <clears throat> so and here we have x bar. So assume it is not convex. So assume it is not concave at p, then it looks like this. Now, then, uh, okay, so we also assume it's not concave at y bar, but you know, so we, we don't care about this. So then we have these two diagonals and they, and they intersect at this point M bar. We have the corresponding point M on the geodesic YP. And by assumption, by, by assumption, the two small triangles are, are thin. So we have that this, uh, is not larger than, sorry, yeah, that this is not larger than that. And this is not larger than that. And so the sum of the distance from x, m, and m, z, is not larger than the distance from x bar minus m bar plus m bar minus z bar. And this is again strictly smaller than the distance from x. So this is a this is a shorter segment, so it's shorter than uh, this this. Yeah. Okay, this, this strict inequality line. is a key. So this strict yes, inequality. Yes, yes. So on the right, so this is in the Euclidean space or, or on the sphere, this is a strict inequality on the right. So here on the right is this, it's a strict inequality. And so we we get here, so we have two non-strict inequalities. And uh, this is equal to x minus p plus p minus z because p is on the geodesic and this is a contradiction yeah because of the choice so this is a comparison so this is equal to this and this is equal to that thank you yeah 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 are there other questions comments no doesn't seem to be the case. Yeah, okay. Um, I thank you for your attention. I apologize for being a bit slow. Uh, yeah. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Can I, uh, are you assuming metric space is complete when you define cat copper spaces? Mm -hmm. Yeah. With this condition? Uh, yeah. So, in fact, it's, yeah. So, yeah, one can do without. So, uh, so actually, uh, yeah, uh, the, um, so the point is that here it's not so important. So, so if you make reasonable definitions, uh, so for instance, if you use the definition we made, then uh, we have used. So then you can, you can, uh, you can, uh, so 
and then you can uh, you you don't have to assume that your space is complete, but then the completion will also be at zero. Okay. So okay, and then you you can you can restrict here to complete spaces. Thank you. Are there other questions? No. Okay. Maybe we no. can just thank the speaker. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I was waiting for more questions. Thank you, sir.